in every single way. I want to talk to you about something which has been on all of our minds, every single one of us, since, uh, since Buffalo, since Uvalde. I don't know if people really know this, that when you were in office, you, you passed a, an, an assault weapons ban with bipartisan support. That ban lasted for 10 years. <laughs> on Sunday, the Senate reached a, a tentative deal on gun safety. Myself, many other people say that they don't believe this goes far enough. What, what's your take on this? Why is it so difficult? As someone who didn't grow up here, I'll never be able to get my head around it. Why is it so hard for America to come to an agreement around this issue? Because while there was an overwhelming majority, there was when I was president, for sensible gun safety measures. The gun culture itself is sufficiently strong that there are more people who are against doing something than for it if it's a voting issue. That is, when you see a poll in the paper and it says, by 75 to 25, mm. the people like Corden's blue tie better than Clinton's yellow and blue tie. Mm. Right? You may be, but it wouldn't stop you from voting for me. You're not gonna vote for him just because he got a blue tie. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to trivialize this. I'm just saying, you always have to ask yourself is, when the chips are down, is this a voting issue? And a lot of gun owners are inherently suspicious of government, easy to spook, and don't want to take a chance. And uh, I remember <laughs> I came out for background checks in 1982, 11 years before I signed the Brady background check law, running for governor of Arkansas. I had an uncle who was the smartest man in my family. He had about a sixth grade education. He was a country guy. He called, he said, are you out of your mind? I said, buddy, does anybody down there think I'm gonna take your guns away? He said, no, they don't. They know you, they like you, but all they've got is hunting and fishing, Bill. He said, none of these people can afford a vacation out of state. They don't, this is their life. And so when they come after you, a lot of them will vote against you, not because they believe it, but because they don't wanna take a chance, which means, if you want to deal with this issue, the single worst thing you can do is run away from it. That is, you know, when I signed the assault weapons ban, it was a brutal fight. Mm. We got it through in the Senate, but in the House, the Speaker of the House told me, he said, I'll lose if we pass this. He said, I'll support it if that's what you want, but I will lose, and he did. So if you want this, America, it has to be a voting issue for you. In the meanwhile, what they did is not an enormous amount, but it is not insignificant either. If, you made, if every state had a, uh, these red flag laws, and if every state actually enforced them, and did the, some of the other things that are in here, including having readily available mental health facilities, it would help but the red flag law would have stopped some of these mass shootings. The assault weapons, all you gotta do is look at the charts that are available. When we did the assault weapons ban, deaths from school shootings and mass shootings generally dropped. And at the end of my eight years, there had been a 25% 25-year low in the murder rate, in the crime rate, a 33-year low in the murder rate, and a 46-year low in the illegal gun homicide rate. And nobody missed any time in the deer woods. I grew up in this culture. I shot a 22, I think, for the first time when I was 10 or 12 years old, 410 shotgun, a little shotgun when I was 14. I still own a hunting rifle I was given when I was governor. The state police gave me a revolver as a sort of a collectible when I left office. Uh, I once had a lifetime membership to the NRA back when they cared about resolving real issues and I got them to help me resolve a hunting issue when all the retirees in North Arkansas wanted to put fences up and the hunters had been hunting there for decades. Anyway, we worked it out and they helped us. That's when we were talking to each other. So if you want to do this, don't be afraid to talk to us.
people. And don't talk down to them. Don't assume that when you see somebody like Mr. LaPierre screaming on television that everybody who's on that side is like that. Assume that they got good sense and they're afraid of losing what they've got. And instead of telling them they're dumb if they don't agree with you, ask for their help. We need to just talk to each other again. And don't be, device, uh, don't be defensive. It's very interesting. It's not necessary for somebody to agree with you to trust you with their vote. I mean, we think of those kids in Uvalde. Think of their families. And think of every single parent in America with a child in the age range of those people, including you. Mm -hmm. And every, I promise you, every parent talked about it and thought about it. So did every grandparent. We gotta recover this somehow. We've gotta reach people where they live instead of this, you know, kind of dueling resentments and sneering disapprovals. I mean, the, the few times that, that you and I have met, I've always been struck by how you always retain so much optimism. You've, you always seem to have an optimistic outlook on life and the world and people and uh, who we are in our core. How do you stay so positive? How do you keep hold of that in what has been a very, very dark few years for everybody? I pay a lot of attention to children. I mean, if you, any of you have kids in the audience, um, if you watch a child coming to life, like I do with my grandchildren now, it's impossible to be pessimistic about the future if they just have a halfway decent chance of growing into the people they ought to be. Now, that's not, you shouldn't be Pollyanna. I actually think there's a fair chance that we could completely lose our constitutional democracy for a couple of decades if we keep making, if we make bad decisions. I'm not naive about this. I've been in a lot of fights. I've lost some and won a bunch, and I've been elated and heartbroken, but I never have before been as worried about the structure of our democratic form of government. But so far, <clears throat> every time we were faced with our own undoing, our conscience kicked in and we stepped away from the break. And that's kind of what I think will happen here, but I don't know when or how. Meanwhile, we should just be vigilant, stand up for what we believe in, and don't return hatred with hatred. That's what I think. Stick around, we'll be President Trump when we come back, everybody. <laughs>